Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. Um, you're watching this on a Monday. So we have chapter three that we'll be reading from Farmer Boy today. Um, from everything I've heard from everybody in class, people are really enjoying the story. I'm so glad because I am too. It's so fun to hear about what Almanza's life is like 150 years ago or so um, growing up on this farm. So we've heard about what life was like for him at school in chapter one, school days. Um, and then the next chapter was all about what home life is like for him with his chores and what he eats at home, things like that. Today, we're going to be reading chapter three, Winter Night. Um, so we're going to find out more about what um, things are like for him at home. Once again, this is at over 150 years ago. So it's so fun to hear about some of the differences between things, the way things were done then versus now. I'm just going to be reading from my book again today. Um, this has a few good pictures throughout, and so I like being able to show them to you. Um, but I might switch it up and occasionally do the ones where I present my screen to you. Now, after supper, Almanzo took care of his moccasins. Every night, he sat by the kitchen stove and rubbed them with tallow. Um, he held them in the heat and rubbed the melting tallow into the leather with the palm of his hand. Here's his little moccasins, like um, very similar to the ones Native Americans would wear. He's not old enough to have leather shoes like the older kids do. I was going to pull up what tallow is. Yeah, it's fat from cattle, sheep, or horses used to make candles and soap, etc. Kind of like a wax. Now his mo moccasins would always be um, comfortably soft and kept his feet very dry, as long as the leather was well greased. And he didn't stop rubbing until it would absorb no more tallow. So they're gonna be really waxy so that no water comes through. Royal sat by the sto stove too and greased his boots. Almanzo couldn't have boots. He had to wear moccasins because he was just a little boy. So that's another one of those things that may seem unfair, but for little boys, um, they just wore these little moccasins because their feet are still growing. And then when the kids are older, they can wear those leather boots and we're gonna find out about that soon. Now mother and the girls washed the dishes and swept the pantry kitchen. And downstairs in the big cellar, father cut up carrots and potatoes to feed the cows next day. Once again, the girls are more responsible for cleaning and cooking. And the boys are more responsible for the animals. When the work was done, Father came up the cellar stairs, bringing a big pitcher of sweet cider and a pan full of apples. This book always makes me so hungry. Their food sounds so good. Now, Royal took the corn popper and a pannikin of popcorn. They're making popcorn. Mother banked the kitchen table, uh, kitchen fire with ashes for the night. And when everyone else had left the kitchen, she blew out the candles. They all settled down cozily by the big stove in the dining room wall. The back of the stove was in the parlor where nobody went except when company came. So it's like a fancy living area. Maybe some of you have um, areas in your house where it's like kind of a family room. Maybe you can play there. And then there's a fancy um, kind of living room. That's what the parlor is. It was a fine stove. It warmed the dining room and the parlor. Its chimney warmed the bedrooms upstairs and its whole top was an oven. Royal opened its iron door and with the poker, he broke the charred logs into a shimmering bed of coals. He put three handfuls of popcorn into the big wire popper and he shook the popper over the coals. In a little while, a kernel popped, then another, then three or four at once. And all at once, furiously, the hundreds of little pointed kernels exploded. So there's his experience making popcorn. He's got that little basket with the corn to go above the fire. And there's the whole family. When the big dish pan was heaping full of fluffy white popcorn, Alice poured melted butter over it. Oh my goodness, this is making me hungry. And stirred and salted it. It was hot and crackling crisp and deliciously buttery and so salty, and everyone could eat all he wanted to. Now, mother knitted and rocked in her high backed rocking chair. There she is knitting. 
Father carefully scraped a new axe handle with a bit of broken glass. Royal carved a chain of tiny links from a smooth stick of pine, and Alice sat on her hassock doing her wool work embroidery. It's kind of like a little ottoman or cushion. Here's her hassock. And they all ate popcorn and apples and drank sweet cider, except for Eliza Jane. Eliza Jane read aloud the news in the New York Weekly paper. Do you see Eliza Jane? Yep, there she is reading to everybody else. She's the only one not eating or drinking right now because she's reading to them. Now, Almanza sat on a footstool by the stove, an apple in his hand, and a bowl of popcorn by his side, and his mug of cider on the hearth by his feet. He bit the juicy apple, then he ate some popcorn, then he took a drink of some cider. He thought about popcorn. Popcorn is American. Nobody but the Indians ever had popcorn till after the Pilgrim Fathers came to America. On the first Thanksgiving day, the Indians were invited to dinner, and the Indians here are referring to Native Americans that we're learning about in history. And they came and they poured out on the table a big bag full of popcorn. The Pilgrim Fathers didn't know what it was. The Pilgrim Mothers didn't know either. The Indians had popped it, but probably it wasn't very good. Probably they didn't butter it or salt it, and it would be cold and tough after they had carried it around in a bag of skins. Almanza looked at every kernel before he ate it. They were all different shapes. He'd eaten thousands of handfuls of popcorn and never found two kernels alike. It's very observant. Then he thought that if he had some milk, he would have popcorn and milk. You can fill a glass full to the brim with milk and fill another glass of the same size, brim full of popcorn, and then you can put all the popcorn kernel by kernel into the milk and the milk will not run over. You cannot do this with bread. So the popcorn soaks up the moisture and it doesn't um, take up extra space in the glass. Popcorn and milk are the only two things that will go into the same place. Now then too, they are good to eat, but Almanza was not very hungry and he knew mother would not want the milk pans disturbed. If you disturb milk when the cream is still rising, the cream will not be so thick. So Almanzo ate another apple and drank cider with his popcorn and did not say anything about popcorn and milk. So he's just thinking all of this in his head without saying anything. When the clock struck nine, that was bedtime. Royal laid away to his chain and Alice her wool work. Mother stuck her needles in her ball of yarn and father wound the tall clock. He put another log in the stove and closed the dampers. It's a cold night, Mr. Corse said. It's 40 below zero, said father. Now it was pretty cold for us the other day when it was about 20 below zero. 40 below zero is how cold it is for them. And it's gonna be even colder before morning, father said. It's making me pretty grateful that we didn't have anything that bad. Now Royal lighted a candle and Almanzo followed him sleepily to the stairway door. The cold on the stairs made him wide awake at once. He ran clattering upstairs. The bedroom was so cold that he could hardly unbutton his clothes and put on his long wool and nightshirt and nightcap. Remember, he doesn't have any heat, but they are um, close enough to this stove that the heat from that warms him up. He should have knelt down to say his prayers, but he didn't. His nose ached with cold and his teeth were chattering. He dived into the soft goose feather bed between the blankets and pulled the covers over his nose. The next thing he knew, the tall clock downstairs was striking 12. The darkness pressed his eyes and forehead and it seemed full of little prickles of ice. This is miserably cold to sleep in. He heard someone move downstairs. It's midnight, what's going on? Then the kitchen door opened and shut. He knew that father was going to the barn. Even those great barns could not hold all father's wealth of cows and oxen and horses and hogs and calves and sheep. 25 young cattle had to sleep under a shed in the barnyard. If they lay still all night, on nights as cold as this, they would freeze in their sleep. So at midnight in the bitter cold, Father got out of his warm bed and went uh, to wake them up. Out in the dark, cold night, Father was rousing up the young cattle. 
He was cracking his whip and running behind them, around and around the barnyard. He would run and keep them galloping till they were warmed with exercise. Almanzo opened his eyes again, and the candle was sputtering on the bureau. Royal was dressing. His breath froze white in the air. The candlelight was dim, as though the darkness were trying to put it out. Suddenly, Royal was gone. The candle was not there, and Mother was calling from the foot of the stairs. Almanzo, what's the matter? Be you sick? It's five o'clock. He crawled out, shivering. He pulled on his trousers and waist and ran downstairs to button up by the kitchen stove. Father and Royal had gone to the barns. Almanzo took the milk pails and hurried out. The night seemed very large and still, and the stars sparkled like frost in the black sky. So no matter what the weather is, they don't stop their work because they are taking care of all of these animals. Now, when all of the chores were done and he came back with Father and Royal to the warm kitchen, breakfast was almost ready. He's getting up early, going outside on a very cold morning, colder than negative 40 degrees. But he comes back to a warm kitchen and a hot breakfast. Oh, how good it smelled. Mother was frying pancakes and the big blue platter, keeping hot on the stove's hearth, was full of plump brown sausage cakes in their brown gravy. Almanza washed as quickly as he could and combed his hair. As soon as mother finished straining the milk, they all sat down and father asked the blessing for breakfast. There was oatmeal with plenty of thick cream and maple sugar. There were fried potatoes and the golden buckwheat cakes, like pancakes kind of, as many as Almanza wanted to eat with sausages and gravy or with butter and maple syrup. There were preserves and jams and jellies and donuts, but best of all, Almanzo liked the spicy apple pie with its thick, rich juice and its crumbly crust for breakfast. Wow. He ate two big wedges of the pie. Then, with his cap's warm earmuffs over his ears and his muffler wrapped up to his nose and the dinner pail in his mittened hand, he started down the long road to another day at school. So after waking up in the freezing cold and even being up at midnight for a little bit, um, he had a full morning of chores. Now he's going off to school. He's walking in that weather and in the snow to get to school. He did not want to go, but it's not for the reason you might think. He did not want to be there when the big boys thrashed Mr. Course. Thrashed means to beat up someone and win a fight. He thinks that these big boys are going to beat up Mr. Course, and we saw in the last chapter that they've done it before and have even injured somebody enough that they that he later died. Almanza is afraid that's what's going to happen to Mr. Course. Do you think it could? We'll see. But he had to go to school because he was almost nine years old. So, a few discussion questions about this chapter. What were some of the chores the family does immediately after supper? What were some of the chores that they did? Well, Almanzo would um, rub tallow on his moccasins. The girls washed dishes and swept the pantry kitchen, probably very similar to some of you after dinner. And father got all the food ready for the animals. And then they had a nice time together. Their entertainment was what? Eating popcorn, sitting around, mother's knitting, reading together. So different things sitting around together as a family. Very nice. Now, why do you think that mother makes so much at breakfast time for everybody? and especially having this big hot breakfast. Well, Almanzo and the boys especially work so hard outside in the cold that they need a really big breakfast to fill up. Do any of you feel like you're especially hungry after you have been out um, like on a big hike or at um, after a normal day of school if you had a recess and PE? You are especially hungry and tired. So mother makes a huge hot breakfast because they have been outside in the cold and working hard. 
Okay, so we're going to find out in the next chapter more about Mr. Course and those hard scrabble boys. So this next chapter is called Surprise. This is the chapter that a lot of you have already been talking about in class. Some of you who've read ahead said this is your favorite chapter coming up. So that's what you'll read tomorrow, chapter four, Surprise. Oh, actually, not tomorrow. Tomorrow you have a little quiz over the things that you've learned so far in the book. Wednesday you'll have chapter four, though. Have a wonderful day. Bye.